Hey everyone. Welcome to Top Tech News. This is your news channel for getting updated with the latest tech news headlines and their impact on business and our lives. To read the full news article for any of the news that we cover, simply click on its link given below in the description. To stay updated, show us some love and hit the subscribe button below and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. This way you would be informed whenever we upload a new video. Hi, my name is D and I am your host for today. Today's top headlines are iPhone exploit gave hackers control of your Wi-Fi. iPhone 11 screen free replacement program announced. Google News showcase expands to iOS. Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 is an AI powerhouse. Oppo Reno 5 Pro plus 5G will come with impressive specs. Let's get started. iPhone exploit gave hackers control of your Wi-Fi. Many security exploits require at least some kind of interaction on your part, but that wasn't true for an iPhone exploit earlier this year. As Ars Technica reported, Google Project Zero researcher Ian Beer has detailed an iOS 13 exploit that lets someone remotely control a device over Wi-Fi using a zero-click attack, that is, with no input required from the target. The exploit took advantage of a buffer overflow bug in a driver for the in-house mesh networking protocol used for features like AirDrop. As that driver sits in the operating system's kernel, which has extensive privileges, a successful hack could have dealt extensive damage. An intruder could have installed an implant that accessed sensitive info like cryptographic keys and photos, for instance. It wouldn't have been trivial to stage an attack, but it wouldn't have been difficult, either. Beer used a laptop, a Raspberry Pi 4 and a readily available Netgear Wi-Fi adapter, and he was working from home during a pandemic lockdown. The stealthiness was the greater concern. A perpetrator could have swiped personal data while leaving you completely oblivious, at least as long as there was a reasonably close hiding place. Notice the use of the past tense, however. Apple fixed the flaw in iOS 13.3.1 before iOS 13.5 arrived with COVID-19 contact tracing. It's also unclear if anyone made use of the flaw in the wild, which might have been difficult with many people working from home. Still, this could easily have been a serious problem in apartments and other places where it's difficult to stay out of Wi-Fi distance from others. iPhone 11 screen-free replacement program announced. A small percentage of iPhone 11 units suffer from touch issues, Apple says, and it's swapping out their displays for free as part of a new replacement program. In its announcement, the tech giant admits that the screens on iPhone 11s manufactured between November 2019 and May 2020 may become unresponsive due to an issue with the display module. Apple didn't elaborate on what exactly causes the screen to stop responding, but it's asking owners with affected displays to check their phone's serial number on the support page to find out if they're eligible for free replacement. Only iPhone 11 models manufactured within the said period are part of the program. Other models, including the iPhone 11 Pro and iPhone 11 Pro Max aren't. As always, owners with affected devices can choose from the three routes they can take. They can find an Apple-authorized service provider, make an appointment at an Apple retail store or, if they can't leave home, they can contact Apple support and arrange mail-in service via the Apple Repair Center. Those who already had their screens repaired and paid for it could also get a refund though they'd have to talk to support to get the process started. Google News Showcase expands to iOS. Back in October, Google unveiled a $1 billion plan to pay publishers for content that appears in its News Showcase carousel. Google News Showcase is expanding today with a number of updates. As planned, Google is paying select news publishers for limited access to content that would otherwise be behind a paywall. It will be made available to users that register with the publication, which is a way for the publisher to build a relationship with readers, Meanwhile, a new carousel will surface important articles selected daily by publishers. For example, if a user follows a news outlet that covers their local news, they will see daily updates on the most important local stories, selected by that newsroom. The Google News app is also surfacing relevant local and national publications in the primary for you feed, while the newsstand tab is adding a dedicated area to discover new news showcase publications. After rolling out to Android in recent weeks, Showcase is now available in Google News for iOS and will be coming soon to Google Discover and News.Google.com online. Publishers will also benefit from new metrics in Search Console. Google reports a near doubling in publications that have signed up for News Showcase since it launched two months ago with close to 400 news publications in countries such as Germany, Brazil, Argentina, Canada, France, UK and Australia. Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 is an AI powerhouse. 
although Apple's latest A14 Bionic chip enabled the iPhone 12 family and iPad Air tablets to deliver impressive performance improvements, Qualcomm is making clear that the next generation of Android devices will rely heavily on advanced AI and computer vision processors to retake the performance lead. Qualcomm recently teased the Snapdragon 888 at its virtual tech summit and is now getting a full reveal. The year-over-year gains are impressive, notably including the largest jump in AI performance in Snapdragon history. The Snapdragon 888's debut is significant for technical decision makers because the chip will power most if not all of 2021's flagship Android phones, which collectively represent a large share of the over 2 billion computers sold globally each year. Moreover, the 888's increasing reliance on AI processing demonstrates how machine learning's role is now critical in advancing all areas of computing, ranging from how devices work when they're fully on to what they're quietly doing when not in active use. The 888 will be Qualcomm's first chip with an integrated Snapdragon X60 modem, including third-generation millimeter wave 5G with the promise of 7.5 gigabits per second downloads and 3 gigabits per second uploads, and notably won't be offered without that modem or 5G functionality. It will also be the first to support Wi-Fi 6E networks and dual antenna Bluetooth 5.2 for non-cellular wireless connectivity. One of the largest changes in the Snapdragon 888 is its shift to a unified AI architecture, including a Hexagon 780 processor with fused rather than separated AI accelerators, promising 26 tops of performance, substantially higher than the A14 Bionics 11 tops and the 15 tops in last year's Snapdragon 865. The sixth-generation AI system includes 16 times more dedicated memory and twice the tensor accelerator compute capacity. Thanks to the new integrated design, it delivers up to three times the performance per watt and 1,000 times faster handoff times than before. All of this power, Qualcomm notes, is needed to empower a series of tripling improvements in photo and video processing. Instead of asking all of a device's cameras to share one image signal processor, the Spectra 580 computer vision processor now contains three ISPs, so you can snap three 28 megapixel still images at 30 frames per second without lag or record three 4K HDR videos at the same time in either case with separate AI workloads for each camera. As crazy as that sounds, the premise is that new AI-powered cameras will automatically monitor three lenses and maintain optimal video zoom at all times, use data from one lens to assist with person or object removal from another, and deliver video composited from multiple HDR image sensors in real time. The latter technology, Qualcomm notes, is for the first time being brought over from the automotive and security camera markets to phones and tablets, enabling computational HDR video capture using staggered HDR sensors to record videos with extreme dynamic range spanning simultaneous long, medium, and short exposures, yet with low ghosting. Photographs can be captured in extremely low light, 0.1 lux, and with 10-bit HDR support for over 1 billion colors. Spectra 580 also benefits from a 35% speed increase and 2.7 gigapixel per second processing, enough throughput to enable burst captures of 120 full resolution photos per second for extreme sports and action photography. Another sign of machine learning's criticality to image processing is found in the new chip's 10th generation 3A AI system, which handles autofocus, auto exposure, and auto white balance. If all of those improvements weren't significant enough, the Snapdragon 888 smaller AI core, the Sensing Hub, is also becoming significantly more capable in its second generation. While it runs TensorFlow Micro rather than TensorFlow Lite, the hub's performance has increased by a factor of 5, and it can now offload 80% of the tasks that were previously handled by the Hexagon AI system. It will continue to enable always-on lift detection, screen waking, and ambient audio detection to fire up AI assistance, as well as supporting detection of car crashes, earthquakes, and specific activities and performing low-power monitoring of 5G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location data streams. Snapdragon 888 is also the first chip to natively support both Trupic and the Content Authenticity Initiative, a cross-industry collaboration to ensure the veracity and authenticity of pictures. The chip is capable of placing cryptographic seals on pictures, enabling independent verifications that images weren't modified after being snapped. This year's CPU and GPU improvements aren't trivial, but compared to the AI and camera improvements they're more straightforward evolutions of what came before. Built with one-arm Cortex-X1 core at 2.84 GHz, three Cortex-A78s with 2.4 GHz speeds, and four Cortex-A55s at 1.8 GHz, the 5 nanometer Creo 680 CPU benefits from 25% more power and 25% better power efficiency.
On the GPU side, the Adreno 660 claims to have the Snapdragon's biggest ever year-on-year -year increases, with 35% faster graphics rendering and 20% improved power efficiency, notably without the use of an ARM Mali core, the Adrenos are built with Qualcomm's own internally developed graphics IP. Additionally, the 660 offers variable rate shading, up to 144 FPS frame rates, and touch-responsive improvements in the 10% to 20% range. The Snapdragon 888 is sampling to OEMs now and should begin appearing in smartphones starting in the first quarter of 2021. Oppo Reno 5 Pro Plus 5G will come with impressive specs. Oppo will introduce the Reno 5 5G and Reno 5 Pro 5G on December 10th. Alongside the vanilla Reno 5 and the Pro model, Oppo is rumored to unveil the Reno 5 Pro Plus 5G as well. There's no word about it yet from Oppo, but an image posted on Weibo revealed its design and we also get some information about its hardware. The rear panel of the Reno 5 Pro Plus 5G looks similar to the Reno 5 5G and Reno 5 Pro 5Gs and has a quad camera set up on the back, but the unit that's placed on the right side of the first camera has a rectangular shape. That might be the rumored 12MP telephoto module with 2x optical zoom. The primary camera is said to use a 50MP Sony IMX7XX series sensor, making the Reno 5 Pro Plus 5G the world's first smartphone to have it on board. The third one will be a 16MP ultrawide angle unit, but the purpose of the fourth camera is currently unknown. The source further claims that Reno 5 Pro Plus 5G will be powered by the Snapdragon 865 soak, and there will be a version with a plain leather back, which will be the first mass-produced smartphone with an electrochromic back cover. Seeing how Oppo has mass-produced a phone having this technology, chances are we'll see one plus, and maybe Realm follow suit soon. Well that's about it for today. Hope you found it helpful. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. And do show us some love by clicking on the thumbs up button. Have a wonderful day everyone and we will be back again soon.